Hello, my name is Mary de Silva. Welcome back to part two of Theory of Change for Complex Interventions. And in this part, we're going to discuss how you refine a theory of change and a program or a complex intervention through a process of formative research and piloting in order to create your final intervention, which you take forward in a formal evaluation. So this is the process through which um, you define and um, develop a theory of change. Um, and this we covered in part one. So we've done the workshop and now we're at the formative research phase where we want to take the assumptions which we've articulated in our map and convert them to rationales. So all the things we weren't sure about in our theory of change, or in our, how our program would actually work, we need to test those so that they become evidence, they become rationales, which means that we think our program is much more likely to work in real life. So that process involves using the assumptions from your theory of change and turning them into research questions for the formative research phase. And then you identify appropriate methods and data sources to address the research questions. And then you use the answers to those research questions to formulate rationales and to modify your theory of change. So I'm going to give you a, a, a real example of this happening. So this is a peer support worker program to promote recovery for people in psychiatric wards in Uganda. You don't need to look at the detail of the theory of change. We're just going to look at uh, some of the assumptions. So the first intervention is that the community mental health team have to recruit people to become peer support workers. So very much the same as the example of the Thinking Healthy program that I used in part one, the very similar assumption um, that we need to find people with mental health problems or if you've had and recovered who've lived experience of mental health to become peer support workers and you essentially ask the question what could go wrong in order to um, develop your assumptions so these are the things that this project thought could go wrong in Uganda around this particular intervention component so firstly the community mental health teams don't have the time the resources and the motivation to recruit peer support workers which means that they don't actually try to recruit anybody or they don't have the time to recruit people. The second assumption is that people with lived experience of mental health problems or outpatients actually have the competencies necessary to be peer support workers. They have the skills to be peer support workers. And thirdly, that they're willing to become peer support workers. So those are three uh, assumptions from this theory of change. And the purpose of the formative research is to test those assumptions and to turn them into rationale. And essentially, the kind of overarching questions you're asking is, is it feasible? Is the program feasible? Is it acceptable? And is it sustainable? And if you do your formative research and it says, yes, you have a new rationale, and if the answer is no, then you need to design a new intervention. So for example, in order to test this assumption that the community health uh, team do have time to recruit peer support workers, you might run a pilot. You might go and send them out into the community to see if they can recruit people. You would then do qualitative interviews with them and also with any people that they've identified to understand whether it was feasible to recruit peer support workers, whether it was acceptable to the peer support workers to do this role, and whether it's a sustainable thing whether this is um, there are enough peer support workers, potential peer support workers in the community for this actually to be an intervention that could sustain itself beyond the life of this project. And if the answer to any of those questions was no, um, then you would need to adjust or adapt your intervention appropriately. So for example, if the major barrier is that the community su uh, support team simply don't have the time to add this extra duty onto their workload, then you might think of, of recruiting a particular person or employing a particular person to be the one that goes out and finds and trains the peer support workers. Because if you don't adapt your intervention, then it won't work in the real world and the whole thing will fall down. So the aim of this formative research and piloting is really to test the waters, to test whether you, what you want to do is feasible, acceptable and sustainable, and if not, to adapt it to make sure it is feasible, acceptable and sustainable. So once you've done this formative research and you've 
converted as many assumptions as you can to rationale, then what you want to do is actually test the whole program. So you can run a pilot. So this might mean that you work in one clinic, you have a small number of health workers that you train, you recruit patients, you run the program and you do the whole evaluation on this small scale. And that enables you to further test any remaining assumptions and convert them to rationales. So by actually attempting to run the intervention on, the sm on a small scale and also measuring the outcomes that you want to measure, you're testing the evaluation plan for your program and you're also making sure that the intervention that you're going to implement is more likely to work. So an, as an example of this, uh, we would run a pilot to show that the recruitment of outpatients uh, to be peer support workers was feasible and acceptable and sustainable. So the uh, community health team went out, they did the task of recruiting people and they found enough and those people were willing to be peer support workers and they did have the required competencies. So that gave us confidence to think, okay, we can actually roll out this intervention either as part of an ongoing program or as part of a, a randomised control trial, for example, to evaluate it. And at the end of this intervention development and testing process, then um, you come up with kind of the required information that you need in order to run an evalu your, your evaluation. So things like, what's your recruitment rate? So how many people, patients, can you actually recruit into the program? What's their baseline severity of, of illness? How many of them do you lose to follow up? What kind of effect do you think you might find in your evaluation? And also, finally, what is your actual final intervention? What are your final uh, rationales? What's your assumptions? What's your actual different intervention component to the final theory of change map, which shows exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it? So that was just a kind of brief um, overview of how you would refine uh, theory of change, refine your program to be ready for a full scale evaluation. And I would highly recommend that anybody who's developing a new intervention goes through this process of piloting and refining before implementing it for real, because it will iron out all those teething problems which um, uh, which plague so many programs and using the theory of change uh, framework for this process is very helpful because it very clearly tells you which are the problems you need to test, which are your assumptions which you need to make sure are true before you implement it. So it gives you a nice research framework within which you can do your um, formative research and piloting.